Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Now, normally I talk about spaceships and space technology, but the hot ticket in gaming right now is a little game called Pokemon Go, a game which is literally transcending generations. Uh, with uh, its aug This augmented reality game is so popular that the launch is being delayed in several territories because the servers are being crushed under the load of all these people playing the game. But... There's a whole lot of space age technology that makes this augmented reality game possible. I mean, for those that you don't know, uh, the game runs on smartphones and you basically walk around a real world looking for monsters and then once you're there, you can interact with the monsters using uh, augmented reality to aim your device and look and catch and things like that. But listen, this game owes a huge debt to stuff developed for the space program. I mean, let's start at the most basic level. GPS, right, the Global Positioning System, is literally a constellation of satellites and every smartphone is using this to find the location. So, the way GPS works is you have a couple of dozen satellites out in high orbit. They're in like 11, 12 hour orbits, way out in polar orbit, and each satellite has a, a unique identifier, it has a highly accurate clock, and it's continually transmitting out this clock signal and it's continually transmitting out its identification and where it is based upon its orbital elements. And so by triangulating multiple satellites and multiple signals, GPS receivers can figure out where you are roughly now to within a few meters. But it wasn't always this way. So GPS was designed by the US military in beginning in the 1970s. They started launching their first experimental GPS Block 1 satellites in 1978 and the Block 1 series continued till about 1985. All these spacecraft were launched from Vandenberg Air Force Base because of course they were going into polar orbits. Uh, after that, they began of course upgrading to the Block 2 which is essentially GPS as we know it today. Now, some of you might wonder why a service of such strategic military importance is provided free of, uh, free of use by the US military. Surely this is a hugely strategically important, uh, tactically important service that could be exploited by forces hostile to American interests. Well, in 1983, a Korean Airlines flight strayed off course into Soviet airspace and subsequently was shot down in a terrible tragedy, a terrible international incident. And in the wake of this incident, US President Ronald Reagan at the time, he signed a directive demanding or making clear that GPS would be made available to civilians once it was developed. Uh, however, initially, the military tried to reserve the best quality of GPS signal for US military only. Uh, they introduced a feature called selective availability. And what this was, was the satellites would be running a special bit of cryptographic code that would subtly change their timing by a very small amount. So if you knew the code, you could figure out the errors and subtract out the errors. But if you didn't know the code, and that was only military GPS receivers that had this, you could only get precision to about 100 meters. But then... The first Gulf War came along, and due to the magic of military procurement, there weren't enough military GPS units to go around, and you know, troops in the field were getting GPS units sent to them by their friends and family in care packages. And of course, these were using the civilian GPS that were only accurate to about 100 meters. And this became such a problem, the US military became so reliant on these civilian GPS units that they turned off selective availability for the rest of the war, and therefore everyone worldwide got great precision. Now after that, of course, it got turned back on, but the extra precision was really useful, and it turns out that many other organizations wanted higher precision navigation data. So a process called differential GPS was introduced. Now, differential GPS essentially relies upon the fact that because the uh, errors which are introduced are changing slowly, the, a specific place on the Earth may be different by about 100 meters, but pretty much everywhere near it will be different by the same 100 meters. So if you have a series of stations that know exactly where they are and they measure the GPS signals, they can transmit, they can collect uh, corrections 
which can then be shared. And so GPS units started to have differential GPS inputs so that if you were a boat or whatever, you could get information, say, from the U.S. Coast Guard to uh, correct your position. So, yeah, U.S. military wanted to preserve the high-precision GPS for them, but the U.S. Coast Guard, separate part of the U.S. government, was providing information to defeat, defeat selective availability. So, yeah, it was about a decade after that that Bill Clinton essentially signed into law a, a directive that made GPS selective availability a, a thing of history. And the next generation of GPS satellites, GPS-3, which are hopefully launching in 2017, they don't include this feature at all, although there are supposedly ways that uh, US military can degrade GPS availability on a more local scale. Of course, the US isn't the only military developing a global navigation system. There is the Russian GLONASS system, there is the uh, European Galileo system, and the Chinese Beidou system. Uh, GLONASS is probably most interesting right now because it works on essentially exactly the same principle as GPS. So similar that GPS chipsets found in practically every modern cell phone that's been released in the last few months now has support for GLONASS transparently alongside GPS. So if you're uh, getting GPS data out of your phone, it's highly likely that it's also using GLONASS data transparently alongside this and just not telling you about this. But GPS on its own can take several minutes to warm up before it starts returning information. The reason is the satellites have a data rate of about 50 bits per second, and that includes the timing signal and the positional information that's required to turn that back into a position. So uh, when you see a satellite, it could be several minutes before you actually get the latest set of orbital elements from it, and you need orbital elements from three satellites. Worst case, it can take about 10 minutes. Now, there is a process called assisted GPS, and what that does is it uses the cell phone's connection to the cell phone network to go out to a known server and grab all the positional information for the satellites. And by doing that, this assisted GPS can warm up the location system much, much faster. So this is a definite improvement. I will point out that many people talk about triangulating via cell phone towers. So cell phone towers, they generally do their triangulation by the narrow cones of visibility to the directional antenna. Triangulation doesn't tend to be particularly good, especially far from cities. Uh, GPS, or sorry, um, cell phone towers, the protocols don't have any timing information that can be used to measure time of flight, unlike the GPS satellites. So you're measuring direction, and the accuracy is generally worse than GPS, so it's not that interesting. However, Wi-Fi, that's far more useful. So... If you've ever tr walked around and tried to look for Wi-Fi networks in a big city, you're going to know there's thousands of them everywhere. Well, it turns out there's a, a great, that's a great way of locating your phone. If you're close to a Wi-Fi network and you're seeing it, your location is very tightly constrained. So there are companies that basically drive around collecting Wi-Fi network information and then correlating to that to uh, GPS locations or longitude and latitude and they sell these databases and they're used for figuring out roughly where you are. That's sometimes why uh, when you move house uh, you'll suddenly find that your location on your phone has moved or is showing your old location. It's because you're next to your old Wi-Fi antenna. Uh, sometimes happens. So that's very useful and it's especially useful because in the middle of built-up urban areas where you have big buildings, the reflections off of, of radio signals off of these buildings can mess with your GPS signal. So uh, having Wi-Fi in the middle of the city, there's a lot more Wi-Fi, therefore it improves the most in the places where you need it the most.